So when I say what's wrong with Pittsburgh, what I mean is what's wrong with Pittsburgh from the perspective of institutional investors. The higher the institutional investor share in commercial real estate, the higher is the turnover. Markets that have more institutional investors have higher liquidity as measured by turnover. There's much bigger variation in turnover. There's a lot of heterogeneity in turnover across MSAs, much less so in cap rates. In commercial real estate, it's the non-institutional investors that are actually acting like buy and hold investors. It's institutional investors that have higher liquidity needs than non-institutional investors. If you need liquidity or you anticipate you may need liquidity, you concentrate your investments in more liquid markets. Even if markets were identical, if we just allocated more institutional investors to one market, that one is going to become the more liquid market. I'm gonna use a model um, where you have market segmentation via liquidity preferences. So there's this Vianos and Wang paper from the uh, Journal of Economic Theory back in 2007. I'm just gonna calibrate that to commercial real estate markets to see does this explain some of the data. You have heterogeneity in investors' liquidity preferences. So they're gonna vary in how frequently they get a shock that makes them want to trade. Both assets have identical payoffs. So there's no risk in this model. The assets are identical, they have the same dividend stream, and yet we find that one market is gonna become significantly more liquid than the other. Within a market, whether you are high or low liquidity needs, that doesn't change how long it takes you to sell, but it makes the time to sale much longer in some of these markets. In support of this idea that institutional investors are actually the, the fast money in commercial real estate, institutional investor share, it goes from 60% to less than 40%. So they're leaving the market. If you're an institutional investor, the problem with Pittsburgh is that it doesn't offer you enough liquidity. I think actually the evidence that's provided in the paper is rather indirect. The evidence we see over there is that at the city level, basically, when you see lower institutional purchases, liquidity or trade frequency is somewhat lower. So that's, that's I think, a little indirect and, and I think actually you can do more on this. It would be really nice to have some micro evidence of, you know, who are these institutional investors? I think the paper is really begging for more direct evidence on the trading frequency of investors and also how they change they are trading frequency over the cycles, over the business cycle, over the financial cycle. You mentioned that there is no risk in the model. That's right, but this is a very serious risk. Basically, you know, the parameters of the model is changing over time. It seems like these institutional investors have even less appetite for real estate than other investors during the crises. The other guys are the noise traders. If anything, I want more of the other guys. I would push you basically in more going micro and also looking at this over time, rather than just one cross-section, look at this over the cycle.